change that cover. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today to commemorate those who fought and those who gave their lives in Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. Let us always honor the memory of the brave men and women who sacrificed so much that we may experience freedom in a country that is free. Let us be reminded of life, liberty, justice, freedom, and democracy that we may be ever grateful to you and to those veterans who gave so much for the country. We ask for your blessings upon us this day and grant unto us your continued fellowship so that we may live in a world that is at peace. Today we honor those comrades who faithfully served with dignity and gave all and now at rest. Please watch over those who are still with us and grant them peace and comfort. Today we commemorate the day that will live in infamy and celebrate the brave men and women who fought and those who died to defend our great nation. We would ask that you would watch over our troops who are now in harm's way. Keep them safe so they may return to their homes and be with their families again. For this we pray. Amen. 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 Cover. Thank you, Mouse. Yep. You may be seated. So we're gathered here today to commemorate 81 years ago when the Japanese Empire attacked the United States and plunged us into the Second World War. Um, and then the following days of Pearl Harbor, in an address to the Congress, President Franklin Roosevelt declared it a day which will live in infamy. Congress then declared war on Japan, abandoning our nation's isolationism policy, and ushering the United States into the Second World War officially. And uh, the attack consisted of over 350 planes and a two-wave attack, and it entirely decimated the Pacific Fleet. And on that day, there was over 2,403 service members who were killed, uh, 68 citizens, notably nine firefighters who were killed, and they were the only firefighters to ever be attacked by a foreign power in the time of war in the United States. And as far as losses, we lost all of our battleships, 12 ships, 130 aircraft, and others were damaged. And then in addition to Pearl Harbor, on the same day, within a seven-hour span, there was attacks on U.S.-held territories in Guam, Philippines, and Malaya, not to mention um, the British Empire of Malaya, Singapore, and Hong Kong. All of the aircraft carriers in our Pacific Fleet were actually out to sea on maneuvers that day, which is very lucky. Now I'd like you to watch this short clip we do not yet know that about half the firepower of the entire U.S. Navy was crippled. Within one week, the number of nations at war had grown to 35, one half the population of this world. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. So ended our peace and our years between the wars. Okay, now I'd like to invite Tony Watros and Vicki Haskins with the placing of the wreath.
And now I'd like to invite Don Steiner for comments from somebody who remembers. Twenty four hundred servicemen were killed at Pearl Harbor. That began a terrible war in the Pacific, thanks to the Japanese. 42,000 Army personnel were lost in the Pacific. 16,000 Army Air Force personnel were lost in the Pacific. 31,000 Navy personnel were lost in the Pacific. 23,000 Marines were lost in the Pacific. As a result of Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor, over 112,000 U.S. service people were lost just in the Pacific. 81 years ago, I was 16, <laughs> hardly old enough to start. But in six months after that, on June 13th, 1942, I turned 17 and enlisted in the United States Navy. Three, four days later, I found myself at Great Lakes, Illinois in boot camp. Following boot camp, I was assigned to training at the Armed uh, Guard Center. And the armed guard were the Navy gun crews that served on merchant ships. The merchant marine ships had to have had to, had to be armed. At, at the first, at the very first, they had very small amount of arms. I recall the first ship that I was on had a 30 caliber machine gun for our aircraft gun, aircraft gun rather. Later on, we got a 20 millimeter gun. But anyway, I was sent down to New Orleans, Louisiana for my first ship, which was an oil tanker. The Germans loved oil tankers because they were the, they were the pride. If you shot, if you torpedoed an oil tanker, that was a pride because they're the ones that's, that uh, furnished the uh, fuel for uh, the rest of the ships and uh, the services. That first ship, an oil tanker, we made, tri made trips from Texas to New York hauling crude oil. We got German sub attacks off the United States coast and through the, uh, um, through the other part of the waters, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> through the Gulf of Mexico. They have, uh, our, they have uh, picked up some uh, German subs that were sunk in the Gulf of Mexico and, of course, up and down the Atlantic coast as well. The Atlantic was just infested with German submarines. The next ship that I got was a small uh, freighter, and we made trips from New York to uh, the Caribbean. On one of our trips, uh, we were sent to, uh, to uh, uh, excuse me, to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, we always traveled with a, with a fleet of other ships, a convoy. At this particular time, we were by ourselves, having left off the other ship at Haiti. And so then we went into, got ready to go to San, uh, into uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. And during the war, those, many of those uh, places had submarine nets so that you could not get into the, into the bay, into the harbor. And they would close the submarine nets at dusk and reopen them at dawn. So we got there at, after dusk and the submarine nets were closed and they signaled us from the Navy base 
and told us just to circle around out in the Atlantic, which we were doing. I was standing watch on the bridge with a pair of binoculars, and I observed uh, what, a, uh, what appeared to be some kind of a ship leaving a wake about two and a half miles ahead. And I called my captain, and I called the Navy officer I reported to. They came up, and they could not identify it. So they signaled the Navy base at San Juan and advised them of what we found. And they had advised us to come on in. They would open up the submarine nets, and we would then come on in, and which we did. And they sent out a destroyer, and the next morning we got word that that was a German sub, and this destroyer sunk it. The, as I said, the Atlantic Ocean was just infested with submarines from Germany. The next ship I got was a was a Liberty ship, a large freighter, was which were just being made around that that time. We sailed from uh, New York to the to the Mediterranean. It took us 17 days to cross the Atlantic from the U.S. over to the Mediterranean. Our ship probably went eight or nine knots, something like that, in a convoy. Convoy probably 40 ships, something like that. Anyway, so then we went over to the Mediterranean and we did operations in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, and all the time, in, during the, in the Mediterranean rather, there were a lot of German subs as well, as well as in, in any of those uh, uh, other areas like uh, uh, Sicily and Italy, we would have uh, German Stuka dive bomber attacks almost every night. So that was, that was a very scary situation. We came back to the States, and then I was assigned to the amphibious forces. And I took training in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and then Chicago, Illinois, and then was sent down to Louisville, Kentucky, of all places. And uh, uh, they were building LSTs, the largest landing ship. That's the big ship that goes into the beach, opens its bow doors, puts the ramp down, and then the t troops and uh, uh, traffic go out, out of that. So I was assigned to an LST, and when it was launched, we took our shakedown crews down the Ohio and the Mississippi River, and then through, through uh, the Panama Canal to Pearl Harbor, and I was increased in rate to a boatswain mate, second class, uh, when we got there to Pearl, and then I had to be transferred to another LST. They numbered those there up to from one to, I think, 1,150, something like that, number of LSTs that they made during the war. And uh, so the one that I got in, in uh, uh, Louisville was uh, number 715, and the one I got at Pearl Harbor was number 45, an old one. Well, we made a lot of operations in the, in the various uh, islands there. We made the invasion of uh, Leyte in the Philippines. And while we were at Leyte, one evening, uh, about 7 o'clock at night, a Japanese kamikaze plane came over. At that time, uh, Japan was really suffering. They had lost most of their air force, most of their navy, and so they were having young men get in these planes, bombers, uh, well, a lot of them were just like uh, uh, other kinds of uh, planes, uh, fighters rather, w that were armed with a bomb, and they would dive those into the ships uh, in order to destroy the shipping. Anyway, one came over our ship uh, about 7 o'clock at night, and uh, we, set, we fired on it, set it on fire, and it turned around and dove into a freighter, a Liberty ship actually. Within two minutes, the next uh, kamikaze came over and dove into the other Liberty ship that was standing nearby. Uh, I had a lot of scary time while I was in the Navy during the war, but that was about the scariest time that I had. From there then, we went to the invasion of, of Okinawa 
and a little island off of Okinawa, part of the Okinawa chain called Ishima, where Ernie Pyle, the famed war correspondent, was, was killed. Uh, anyway, so we made the invasion of Okinawa as well. And uh, we jammed our bow doors on the uh, coral reef going into Okinawa. So they sent us back to, uh, uh, to uh, Guam to have repairs done. And they could not repair them at Guam. So then we went back to Tini Saipan and Tinian. Tinian was a turning point in my life. Uh, I had, had not had an opportunity to go to church very much during the war because out of three and a half years in the Navy, I was, uh, I was out at sea for 31 months. So, and not total, but in, in, rather in total, 31 months out at sea. So I didn't have very much time to go to, go to church. But there was a CV, the, the Navy Construction Battalion had built a little chapel there on, on uh, Tinian. And so I went to services the morning, the evening, Came back to the ship, and that evening I thought I was going to crash for the night, but God had other plans, and God spoke to my heart, and I trusted Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior, and I've never been the same since then. What a wonderful experience. Anyway, then uh, we went, to, they sent us back to Pearl Harbor again to have our ship repaired. They couldn't repair it at Pearl Harbor, so they sent us back to uh, San Diego. We were halfway between Pearl and San Diego when the Japanese surrendered on August 14, 1945. The armistice was later signed aboard the USS Missouri at Tokyo Bay. I think it was uh, September 2nd or September 5th, I'm not sure exactly, one of those days. Well, then we came, I came back home and uh, got married, and the rest is, is history. But I, I missed Pearl Harbor being there. I'm glad I did. I may not have been, may not be here talking to you tonight, but God took care of me and took care of a lot of others. So thank you very much. Thank you, John. That was incredible. So now we'll begin the candle ceremony with representing the U.S. Navy, Bob Watros. I light this candle in memory of the men who served in Pearl Harbor. I'm December 7th, 1941, and lost their lives. You are not forgotten. And representing the United States Marine Corps is Corporal Clarence Cameron. Candle in memory of the Marines that served in Pearl Harbor December the 7th, 1941, and also the Navy Corpsman that also died on that same day. Forgotten. Representing the U.S. Army is Chuck Haskin. I like to smash candle in memory of those serving in the Army who died at Pearl Harbor on December 7th. 1941. Do 
will never be forgotten. And finally, representing the citizens who died, Tony Wastros. I light this candle in memory of those civilians who died at Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. forgotten. And now please join us in a moment of silence. And then now, I'd like everybody to join and sing God Bless America. invite Chaplain Jim Mouse for the benediction. A couple of thoughts crossed my mind when Don was speaking. He said 81 years ago when he was 16, wanted to join the Navy, and at 17 he did. 81 years ago, I wasn't even a twinkle in my dad's eyes. So I guess, Don, I didn't realize you were that old. But we're glad to have you here. So, because uh, I don't know how many posts have actual World War II members in their post. So thank you, Don. Appreciate everything that you did during this time. And you are one of the chosen few from World War II to still be around and be in our post. And you are just a shining light to everybody that knows you. So I appreciate that. Uh, one other thing, I've got a visitor here tonight. I don't know if most of you probably don't know him, George and Everett, District 5 adjutant, something like that. He's got so many titles like me, we don't care. It's just, 
There's George. Thank you for coming, George. So appreciate appreciate it very much. Come all the way from Waterford. So big lake. And got lost quarter mile down the road. So uh, if you could, if you're able to, please stand. The cover. Oh Lord Almighty, remember those who died fighting to protect the dignity and the freedom of mankind. Let our hearts be compassionate and our minds clear and determined in giving them honor and respect. And let us be dependent on the loving kindness of the Lord our God. As we remember the, the departed, let us be courageous protectors and true guardians of freedom. Let us be the true masters of brotherly love. O oh Lord, guide us in the way of moral responsibility, enlighten us and make us true believers in morality and justice. Let this day be a day of commemoration and honor for all those who sacrificed so much in order to give us liberty and our nation security. Remember them, O oh Lord, in your mercy and have compassion on us. Make us a generation of wisdom and discipline and good faith. As we leave this place, please be with us so that we may reach our destination safely. Watch over our troops who are now in harm's way so that one day they may return to the families and ease their suffering during these trying times. For all this we pray. Amen. Amen. Over. And please remain standing for a gun salute and the playing of taps. And please remain standing for the retiring of the colors.
Retrieve. Color guard face. Forward march. You may be seated. So in conclusion, I hope everybody learned something today. And let us not just forget and let December 7th just be a day in history that we forget. And every year we remember those lives that were lost and the cost, of, the price of freedom that we pay every day and those men gave. And I just do want to thank Don again for his experience that he shared with us today. That concludes the Pearl Harbor Day ceremony. Thank you all for coming.